Great, so welcome again, everyone, to Countdown to Downsizing. We appreciate your time and taking um, time out of your day to be here. I'm here today with an expert panel, and we've created this webinar specifically for people who are considering downsizing from a larger home in, into a condo or a smaller home. And the reason we put this together is just because we totally understand how overwhelming this process can seem as you're preparing to go through it. There's a lot of things to think about, and we are making sure that you have the resources you need to get your questions answered and feel confident with moving forward with this process. So let's get started. So my name is Carrie Gatto, and I'm a realtor with Keller Williams Realty in Cambridge, and I have over 10 years experience in serving clients all over the greater Boston area. Um, and I've helped many clients downsize before, and I'm looking forward to also introducing my expert panel. So throughout this presentation, all of us are going to address various questions that come up, frequently asked questions by uh, clients who are going through downsizing. So one of the first things that I hear, especially right now, during and after um, in the post-COVID world um, is I don't know where to go. You know, we're in a tight market and a lot of potential sellers are feeling like, well, yes, I know I can sell my house pretty easily, pretty quickly, but what am I going to do next? How am I gonna find a home? And where exactly is that going to be? What is that going to look like? So with that, of course, um, I'll help you in the purchase of real estate. And I would sit down with you either by Zoom or by phone and do a buyer interview. And this is really a needs analysis where I just listen to what it is that you're looking for and what your vision is for that next phase of life, what's important to you and your spouse or partner if you have one. And I can also connect you with a senior housing expert, Wendy Tatlock with Care Patrol, who is currently on the call today, and she'll speak right after me. And she can help you in looking at all the options that might be available to you in the assisted living arena. So we'll cover all the bases. And another frequently asked question um, is what can I get for my house? I mean, the market has been going crazy as I'm sure everyone has heard about the crazy stories and bidding wars. Um, so we need to find out what actually your home is is worth. And I'll do that by providing you with a highest price analysis and um, looking at recent sales, what is actually comparable to your home in terms of condition, location, and size. And one thing I always advise my clients to do in this very fast seller's market is to consider selling first and buying second. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later, um, but that's what we'll talk about in the listing consultation as well. So um, the other big complaint I hear from people in, in thinking about downsizing is I just have too much stuff. And that's really where things can get emotionally overwhelming. It's when you think about a home that you've lived in for many years, maybe you've raised your family there and you have all this stuff in the basement and the attic and the closets and you need to figure out how do I you know, either get rid of it or pack it or donate it um, or, or just, you know, figure out how to condense your life basically into a smaller space. And today we have Judy, Judy Eisenberg, who is a clutter clear coach, and she specializes in exactly that in helping people, um, figure out how to do, how to work with all their things and what to do with them. So she's going to talk today too, and give us some tips. Another thing I often hear from clients who have children is I want to be fair to my kids. And this can bring up a lot of questions when you're selling a home, particularly if it's one of the largest assets in the family, um, you might have a lot of equity there. And how do you, if one child perhaps, or even two children want, would like to live there, um, or you want to share the proceeds with your children in some form or fashion, how do you do that fairly and equitably between or among children. 
Um, and Sarah Hartline is here today with Mark Orlis and Bloom. She is an estate attorney and she is a great resource for figuring this part out, as is Bridget Sansusi with New York Life. She's in, um, she's with New York Life and she does life insurance, as, among other things. Um, so she'll talk today about how she can help you with your overall financial plan and legacy. So basically back to the real estate side, um, what I'm here to do is to, first of all, help you maximize the value of your current home. And I have different resources and programs for doing that. I'll help you stage it. And of course, you know, Judy can help you declutter as well um, and market the home across multiple platforms, the internet being the biggest one with over 400 websites. Make sure all the buyers know about your home and then, of course, make, um, you know, put standards in place, working with CDC guidelines to make sure that we're doing this all very safely and um, comfortably for you. So we'll set up a showing strategy. And a lot of times in this market, honestly, it might only be one, two or three showings at the most. And if we do it right, it should sell quickly, which is a great advantage too, as well as being able to get a great price on a home in this current market. I can also help you with negotiating a better price on the new home. Um, because I do this every day, day in, day out, I know how to strategically write an offer with um, ways of helping you not overpay on a new home and making your offer more appealing to a seller. I also have off-market opportunities that I have access to through my agent network um, and honestly, just canvassing neighborhoods. Once we identify where you want to be, I will go out there and call homeowners and potential sellers and help you find an off-market opportunity if there is one. And then of course I'll coordinate both transactions to make it as seamless as possible. Um, you know, I have a whole team of people that will help me with that, including real estate attorneys, mortgage brokers, inspectors, contractors, um, and anyone else that you might need along the way. And with my assistant, Jen, we'll make sure that the transaction goes very, very smoothly and you can just focus on your life and on your move. Just want to um, show you a recent testimonial from some clients who downsized and, um, you know, they really struggled with the downsizing process and it took them some time to get there. But once they actually made the move, they looked back and felt so much better. Um, I talked to them pretty regularly. They're really happy in their new place. It's much less maintenance. They have a, a community pool that they can use in the condo complex and um, they really are worry-free, you know, and get to spend a lot more time with their grandkids because they live close to them. So um, it was really a pleasure working with them. And there are more testimonials on, for me and my team on Zillow, as well as on my website, if you're interested in that. So now I'm going to hand it off to Judy, Clutter Clear Coach, to talk about how she helps people declutter their lives while they're living in their home and also in preparation for moving or selling. But I encourage you to um, reach out if you have any specific you know, questions about your situation. You can reach me by email or that's my cell phone. You can text or call me and I'd be more than happy to meet one-on-one -on -one with you. Okay, so I'm gonna stop sharing and hand it over to Judy. Judy, you're, mu you're muted. Okay, now I'll share again. Hi everyone. Again, I'm Judy Eisenberg, professional organizer, the Clutter Clear Coach. And I help people who feel stuck and discouraged because of all their clutter. So I work with them to get rid of it, to donate, to give away um, their things and get organized. 
And I, I put a lot of emphasis also on helping people downsize. Um, as Carrie mentioned, I, <clears throat> excuse me, I work with people to declutter their home and help them pack for the move. And I can even help with the moving process um, with the real, um, sorry, with the um, moving company. And then once you move, if you're close to this area, I can help you unpack and set up your home. So I'm gonna talk about moving and life transitions, living a life with less. So what is downsizing? I like to refer to it as right-sizing. You're choosing to live a pared down life, but right-sizing means you're moving to a place that's gonna be much more appropriate for you. And sometimes you don't wanna do that, but it's gonna be best for you. You'll have less to maintain. It's about letting go of stuff and simplifying. So why would you downsize now? Well, perhaps you're separating or divorcing. Maybe you become empty nesters. Um, maybe you need to move to assisted living or nursing home transition, which Wendy Totlock will talk about later. So when to downsize? Well, you may need to stretch your budget for retirement. Maybe you're feeling really overwhelmed with everything you have to take care of, those responsibilities in your home. And maybe you need a safer environment and stairs aren't good for you anymore. So there are emotional impacts of downsizing. First of all, are you ready to move? And I have an example of that several years ago, I had been living in a really nice two story apartment and the landlords, Tufts University had wanted myself and my housemate to leave, but they gave us a year because they wanted faculty to move in. So I was not ready, but I had a year. I was overwhelmed, it was scary, and it was gonna be a big loss because I had a lot of memories and time spent there. But there are ways to ease those emotions. First of all, you wanna identify why you're downsizing and look at it often. For me, it was because I had to, but I also thought about what I wanted to move to, someplace sunny and safe and um, where I'd be happy. You may feel so overwhelmed and stressed that you need some emotional support from a counselor. I know I meditated a lot during that time to calm myself and that you just sit down for a couple minutes, close your eyes, quiet your mind, and you'll see it makes a difference. You could also take photos of items that you can't bring to a smaller place and make an album so you have those memories. There are positive outcomes. You have less stress. Living smaller is liberating. You have less responsibilities and it's a new beginning. I know when I moved and got settled, I felt a lot lighter. So there are some steps for you to take towards your own downsizing. You wanna make a plan as Carrie had mentioned and schedule it in your calendar. <clears throat> when do you think you need to start de downsizing, decluttering and packing? When you think you might be moving and you're not sure, you wanna make a list of everything you're gonna take. And it's best to start with items that are not sentimental to you. It'll be a lot easier to let them go. And of course you're gonna have to pack. So you can see that the office on the left is pretty cluttered. And for an, or an open house, let's say Carrie would um, schedule, you'd want the room to look nice and clear and more spacious without the clutter. Oops. Oh, okay. And of course you have to make decisions. Sometimes it's really hard for people to do that. I recommend you begin with just one area or part of a room at a time so you're not overwhelmed. It'll make it much simpler for you. Each object that you own, think about it. You might have to even pick it up and hold it. Ask yourself, do I love this? Do I need it? And if you don't, let it go. You have to figure out what you're gonna keep and pack. 
You might have to store some things elsewhere in a storage unit. And of course, I can help you with that to find a place to store. And of course, think about what you're going to sell, give away, or throw away. So you may not be sure what you should let go of. Well, if you have, say, a piece of clothing that's still in its package or it's hanging in your closet with the price tag on it, it's been there for over a year, you're probably not going to wear it. So I would donate it and let someone else enjoy it. And of course, you'd say, I might need this someday. Perhaps it's recipes you've cut out or it's books, maybe magazines that have piled up. If you haven't used them or looked at them in all this time, like a year or more, two, three, you can let them go. Sometimes people have craft projects that they've worked on, but haven't finished. And if you know you're not going to finish it, even though you say it might get to this someday, I would recommend you donate it so that someone else perhaps could finish it. So please, if possible, don't declutter alone, only if you have to. I recommend you find a buddy to help you be accountable. Perhaps a family member or a friend can help you. And if you are disorganized, do not ask someone who is also disorganized because there could be chaos there. This person can help you eliminate anything that distracts you. If you're a procrastinator, they can keep you from doing that. Let them know your needs or issues. If you need to <clears throat> finish this with a certain amount of time, if you have issues like you have ADD and you have to pay better attention, they'll help you with that. Or if you need to take a break every 20 minutes and rest, let them know that. And if you have a goal, do you wanna have this person help you every Saturday morning for three hours to do the decluttering and then eventually help you pack? Let them know that goal. The alternative is to hire a professional organizer like myself. There are plenty organizers or organizers out there in the area. And um, that person will be non-judgmental and will help you with the process. So I have some home staging tips for sellers. I know Carrie said that she helps stage the home that she sells. Um, so if you wanna help along, you need to depersonalize the space. Any photos of family members, any pictures on the walls or knickknacks, take them out, pack them up and make the room less crowded and more spacious. If you need to rent a storage space for extra furniture, do so. If you need things to be patched and repaired and you can't do it, hire a professional, make sure the place is cleaned. You might have to hire a <clears throat> professional cleaner. Go neutral with color because any garish, too dark colors or bright colors might not be appealing to a prospective buyer. Open up those curtains and shades so the sun can shine in and you're going to focus on your curb appeal. So anyone coming to your house for the open house is gonna have only one impression and that's their first. So I don't think that a room on the left would be that appealing. Maybe you can paint it or get new bedspreads and lighten it up. So here's a before and after. The room on the left, the living room may not look crowded, but there are boxes that are unpacked, taking up space. And what you can do is take some of the furniture out, rearrange it, and I'll feel airier and more spacious that way. So curb appeal. I don't think that if your house is on the market for sale and people come by and there's all kinds of weeds and overgrown bushes, that will be nice to look at. So you can do it yourself or you can hire a professional gardener. And just to let you know, that's what I also do besides helping you unclutter. My business is called Sun and Shade Gardening, and I'll certainly help you with your curb appeal. So thanks so much for participating in this webinar. Again, I'm Judy Eisenberg, Clutter Clear Coach, 
if you want to contact me for half an hour free consultation on the phone, we can discuss your organizing and moving needs and perhaps curb appeal needs. My information is here and I believe you will get it on a flyer that Carrie will be sending out. So okay. thanks so much. And Judy. And oh, stop share. Sorry, Judy, if you could also put it in the chat, that would be great. Your oh, sure, I'll do that. Thank you. And I believe I am introducing attorney Sarah Hartline, who will talk to you about estate planning. Hit it, Sarah. Hi, good morning, everyone. Sarah Hartline. I'm an estate planning attorney with Markles and Bloom, and I'm going to talk today a little bit about uh, estate planning and how that plays into downsizing. And so let me pull up my, make sure I can do this. Where'd it go? Let's try that one more time. Always one person that has technical difficulties. So I guess it's my turn today. <laughs> See if I can get this. Here we go. Okay. All right. So. So yes, so um, as estate planning attorneys, we do generally recommend reviewing your estate plan every five years or anytime you have any sort of major life transition. And certainly downsizing is one of those major life transitions. So if you do have estate planning documents already, it's a good idea to take a look at those. And if you don't have any um, documents in place, which happens, it's sometimes one of those things that goes to the bottom of your to-do list. Um, now is a great time to, uh, to get that in motion, to meet with an attorney and start thinking about um, how to get these documents in place. In my opinion, the two most important estate planning documents uh, are the healthcare proxy and the power of attorney. Um, and these should definitely be up to date. So when you're going through, um, you know, uh, down the clutter clearing and organizing um, and going through the paperwork, um, this is definitely something that I always tell people to try to put your hands on. Um, you know, can you put your hands on your power of attorney and your healthcare proxy? Are they originals? Do you know where the originals are? They might be at an attorney's office. They might be with a child. Um, so definitely um, figure out where those are and then also figure out, are there updates that need to be made? So maybe the agents that you have appointed um, are no longer uh, the best people to be serving, maybe phone numbers are outdated. Um, so those are all things to look at um, when you're reviewing these. So the other important documents um, are, are wills um, and trusts. Um, and those are documents that uh, generally, um, at least for the will, is going to direct where your assets are going to go or who's going to receive your assets after, you're, after you've passed. Um, trusts can be used for a lot of different reasons. Um, trusts can be used for estate tax planning purposes. They can be used if you're leaving assets to a minor child to provide some management um, of the funds that you're leaving to that child. Uh, they can also be used for divorce protection, creditor protection. Um, again, if you're leaving assets to someone and want to um, have a, some sort of structure set up um, to provide some more protection than, than leaving funds to that person outright. So, um, you know, one of the things that, um, you know, to be thinking about when you are downsizing, as Carrie talked about, um, and uh, is in terms of, you know, where are you going? And, you know, are you going to a condo assisted living? Um, and how is that going to play into your estate plan? Um, so if you're selling real estate or you're purchasing real estate, um, you might want to be thinking about how your how that uh, asset is going to be titled. Um, as I mentioned there, you can title it in your individual name, but you might also be thinking about whether it should be titled in a trust um, or, for example, using a life estate deed as another um, planning tool um, that we often speak with clients about. So definitely, again, all things to be looking about and uh, looking at in terms of reviewing your plan. And 
I think I missed a slide, but that's okay. I'll just keep going with it. Um, so yeah, so I think that in terms of, um, you know, it, even if you, you know, if you do want to move forward with, you know, uh, an estate plan or updating your existing plan, I know one of the things right now that I hear from a lot of clients um, in terms of concerns is meeting with an attorney. I'm actually in my office right now, um, but a lot of days I work from home. And so I know a lot of people are concerned because of, you know, because of COVID about meeting with people in person. And luckily our office, like a lot of other offices, um, are meeting with clients virtually. And even um, one thing that I've really liked is, is that when I meet with my clients, they can also meet with their, um, they can also have, if we do a Zoom meeting, for example, they can have their children join, uh, their financial advisor. Um, so it's a good way of making sure that everybody's on the same page um, in terms of their planning um, and a good way to, to, to share information. So um, like I said, um, you know, even if um, you're not comfortable right now going into an office, you can meet with uh, an estate planner with other professionals virtually. I think everybody um, on this Zoom call um, also meets with clients, at least in some capacity via Zoom. So um, definitely something to consider. And then finally, just continuing on the theme of early is better. Um, I always, you know, like many things, starting the process now um, is going to is going to be better in terms of ensuring that you have the time to make decisions, um, making sure that you can you know properly think these things through, um, and also just avoiding one of these you know more catastrophic um, situations, which unfortunately we do deal with that side of things where you know someone is calling because. Um, there has been a hospitalization, for example, of a family member, and they can't find the power of attorney or a healthcare proxy. They do need to go to court to pursue a conservatorship or guardianship. Um, that can be very stressful, expensive, especially uh, you know at a time where um, you know they'd rather be focusing on that family member um, and and their health. So. Definitely having a plan in place now, even if it's not the perfect plan, uh, can provide a great deal of peace of mind, um, certainly as you're, you're moving on to this next stage in life. So here's my contact information and I would be happy to um, uh, you know, speak with you, um, email with you if you have specific questions about your situation. And I will now pass the presentation on to Bridget Sansusi, who will be talking about retirement plans and different types of insurance. Thank you, Sarah. Sarah, if you wouldn't mind also putting your information in the chat, that would be awesome. Thank you. Sorry, Bridget. Okay. Hi everyone, thank you so much for staying with us so far. My name is Bridget Sansusi. I'm a uh, financial professional and agent with New York Life Insurance Company. Um, we're located in Waltham, but just like everyone else, um, you know, we're 100% virtual. If someone wants to meet in person, that's absolutely fine with me too. Um, so today I'm going to really talk about, you know, everyone knows insurance, you know, life insurance. I work with long-term care, but I really kind of want to touch on how I kind of work with someone you know, how we work, you know, one-to-one -to, -one to kind of get to the solution. Um, so with New York Life, you know, when, when we make an appointment and, you know, we're, we're talking about you, you know, life insurance, long-term care, it's a very personal, you know, and an emotional process. And my goal is to get to know you and your family and everyone involved so that I can find what works, you know, for everyone. Um, you know, a lot of people have insurance already, which is, great you know I, I don't expect that you know most people don't and but they don't know how to read it or they haven't looked at it in years so a part of my job is to read what you have and, and just kind of see where you are in the in the process so you know basically when we're we're sitting down or we're you know doing this virtually we are basically just kind of find what's right for you looking at what you have and what we can do to enhance it um, so New York Life is a fortune number 67 of a fortune 500 company. Um, you know, we're a mutual company. They've been, you know, established since 1845 and we give back to the community. You know, we are encouraged to, um, to volunteer and, you know, New York Life is, is great with, you know, donating money towards that too, which is awesome because I love to volunteer. Um, so my role is to provide guidance and just become a trusted partner. Um, things I help with, retirement needs, children's education, extended care, um, you know, 
lifetime income using insurance. And I coordinate with other professionals that you probably already work with, like your attorney, you know, like Sarah Hartline, your accountant or CPA, even your home and auto agent, you know, uh, if you have a job, your HR benefits. So these are, it's not just working with me. I work with everyone else that's in your life to make everything kind of come together and be a little bit easier. Um, so what we're really looking at is your financial GPS, you know, um, how we help to get you where you need to be, guidance, preparation, and solutions. Um, you know, so as far as the guidance part, you know, the human touch, um, let's, you know, we, questions I'm gonna ask you, what's important to you? What are your priorities? You know, you can say it's um, lower my taxes, or you can say something like fund an education for my grandchild, whatever it is, that's what we're gonna focus on um, using the system. And so for preparation, you know, we, we're here to craft, um, execute, um, you know, your unique plan. So we think about your goals, we, we prioritize your goals, um, and then we come up with a plan to, to get you there, okay? And, you know, think of this as your financial house. We discuss the hows and whys to take appropriate steps. Um, just like, you know, building a house, you know, you start with the foundation, protection, and then, you know, in our working years, accumulation, and that's where the solutions come in. And then next it's preservation, you know, leaving a, a legacy. Um, other things that we um, look at before, you know, we build a financial house is can we help construct a strong foundation in coordination with other professionals? Um, so, you know, do you have a will or a trust? You know, you talk to someone like Sarah, you know, emergency savings, you know, we just went through a pandemic, we're still going through it. A lot of people had to rely on that. Um, you know, a lot of us, you know, now that we're home are taking care of family members. So long-term care, life insurance. So just so many different, um, you know, avenues and things we can talk about, but I'm really focused on what you're focused on. Um, you know, others, uh, financial professionals may talk about risk mix. We kind of focus on tax mix. We help tax diversified, we help with a tax diversified approach, um, you know, to your accumulation goals. Um, including, as you can see, education funding, retirement plans, um, and other saving goals. Um, so as far as preservation, um, you know, pension maximization, guaranteed lifetime income products. Um, so we're going to really focus on, you know, especially where we're talking about downsizing. Are you looking to buy your vacation home, your forever home? Are you looking to sell, downsize? Whatever it is, that's what we're going to talk about. And two of the you know, common questions that um, I get is, am I saving enough? Um, I don't know, we have to look at it. And you know, are you covered for that you know, insurance wise? Um, so this is where your information is, is inside the system. And you know, we, we put it in, you know, like let's take my age for instance, I'm 49 and I'd love to retire realistically, let's say 70. Um, you know, let's use a, a common annual salary. Okay, like today I, you know, say I make 80,000. Well, what do I wanna make in retirement? So we have to think of this number in terms of, well, in retirement, um, you know, you're not getting a paycheck from work where it's taken out, you know, all these different, you know, monies for, for benefits. So let's say, you know, in retirement, you wanna live on 60% of that. So 75% of your salary. So whatever it is, you know, we're gonna see, do you already have retirement savings? Um, you know, just anything at all that pertains to you, I can put it in my system to kind of calculate, um, you know, what you've already saved. So say you're talking to someone who's my age and I say I've already saved, you know, 200,000 in my 401k. Let me add another zero to that. Um, and well, I'm just gonna use a guess and just put a number in there for, for growth. Again, we can't predict the market. And, you know, so this is not me with my calculator sitting there and, and kind of calculating this, our system does it. And we look at, okay, um, at 49, and if I retire at 70, you know, that's my earning potential is about, you know, 1.5 million. Do I have enough to cover those tools? So I'm not going to go into the entire assessment. Um, you know, this is really nine to 10 minutes that I'm looking to do, um, just kind of show you how I work with someone. But when we sit down together, this is more like, you know, an hour conversation um, at minimum. So um, I'm going to leave it at that. Um, just kind of, um, Thank you everyone for being on the call. If you'd like to go into more um, in depth on how we work together, uh, my information is in the chat. Um, you know, contact me and you know, we can set up our call totally free.
Thank you. Thank you, Bridget. Thanks. Thank you all ladies. Um, that was great. And obviously just the tip of the iceberg, um, but we wanted to really just show you how we work with uh, our clients and how we can be a resource to you. And I think- um, Hey, Carrie. Yeah? So I haven't presented yet. We skipped over me. Oh, we did? Oh my God. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I'll go over oh, everybody so early. <laughs> It's all right. Yeah. No, I'll, I'll go uh, breeze through mine. <laughs> I apologize, Wendy. Usually I thought I was last and I totally forgot. Yeah, no, I. it's fine. I'll, I'll go now. Yep. Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for uh, hanging in there. I am uh, Wendy Tatlock. I am a senior care advisor. I'm a certified senior advisor. I'm a certified dementia practitioner. I help um, seniors and their families. Hello. All right, so why am I not? Nope, Sarah, it wasn't just you. Okay, there we go. Hi, so I help seniors and their families find safe, affordable senior living that is the right fit for them. I provide very personalized service um, and I have expertise in different financial options, complicated family dynamics, and how to assess the true strengths of individual communities. I'm really about helping people find the right fit. Um, it, the the I'm gonna talk first about how you think through what is the right fit and then go through four different um, types of senior housing and the pros and cons and who they are best um, suited for. So the, the four main things to consider before you start um, looking into uh, senior living is where do you wanna be? What kind of things do you need help with or what care do you need? What's your budget? And what do you want the environment to be like? What do you want the culture to be like? I'm gonna dig into these in, in more detail here um, about how uh, some ways you can think about them. So first, where do you wanna live? So we're really lucky in, in Massachusetts and New England because there are just so many awesome options. Um, but so stand back and think about what do I wanna be nearby? Do, do I have family in certain towns or areas? Do I have a church I still wanna to go to? Do I have friends in certain areas? Um, and that helps zero in on, on options. Um, probably the most important variable to look at is what do you need help with? And there are really four different types of help to think through. So if you can say, I need that one, but not that one, this one, but not this one, that really helps you zero in on what is the right type of senior living for you. So do you need help with activities of daily living, showering, get around, getting around, cooking, et cetera? Or, uh, do you need, um, do you have some memory challenges? Um, are you, uh, or your family member, um, do you have on Alzheimer's early or later, or even some mild cognitive impairment? Um, I would look, make different recommendations in those cases. A big differentiator here in Massachusetts is what kind of medical care do you need? Um, Massachusetts treats things like injections and even oxygen care and wound care very differently and in certain places um, you, you can't really need, need uh, have those types of needs and live there. So, and then finally acute care, do you have needs that are just short-term that would, uh, you know, make me recommend different options for you. Next, um, what's your budget? So you're obviously gonna look at your income and your assets, but there's a couple other things to look at too. Um, one uh, way to look at it is what is your current monthly budget and what piece of that is healthcare? So to split that out, because a lot of places when you go to move there, everything is included except your healthcare expenses. So that's another sort of sanity check on what can I afford? Some other ways people uh, free up some money is by selling their house. So what is your home value? Um, there are also a lot of different veteran benefits and spouse benefits that you might not be aware of and I can connect um, people to resources to help sort that out. There are different ways to get money out of life insurance and um, long-term care insurance, and Bridget can help you with those things. And finally, what do you want the environment to be like where you live? Are you okay with a smaller apartment, or do you still really want um, a fair amount of space? Um, are you more of an introvert and like a lot of privacy and quiet time, or um, are you a very, very social person. And the reality is most people are somewhere in the middle of all of these things. But I find if you spend a little time thinking through these needs early on in the process, it helps zero in on the right solution sooner. 
So next, I'm going to talk about four different types of senior living. Um, I'm going to talk about bringing, staying in your house or downsizing to like an apartment or a condo and bringing care in and what that's like. I'm going to talk about continuing care retirement communities. I'm going to talk about assisted living and I'm going to talk about nursing homes. Um, the other option that I'm not going to dig into detail, but I can get information for people offline too, is the state and the different towns have some different low income senior housing as, as well. Um, and then if you're interested in just sort of like 55 and up communities, that's something um, Carrie could help you with, a, a realtor. Okay, so first in home care. And for each of these types, I'm going to give you, um, you know, what do they roughly cost? So for planning purposes and how to think about how to budget for them. And then I'm going to talk about some of the pros and cons. So what income care is, is there are different types of care you can bring into your house. People can help with anything from errands to in companionship to um, help with your ADLs, your activities of daily living and, and private duty nursing. For planning purposes, um, I would assume to spend about $30 an hour for non-medical care. And that's a minimum of usually two to three hours. So if you just need you know, um, a little bit of care, it, it counts a certain amount. If you need it around the clock, the math um, makes it about $20,000 a month. So the, the positive of bringing care in home obviously, is that you get to stay in your familiar home or a condo that you downsize to or whatever. And, and that's great. It's more spacious than something like assisted living. So you have room for your family to visit. And it can be the most affordable option if you only need help with a few things. On the other hand, um, and I think people often discount this, it can be very isolating, especially like in this past year. Um, it, it, you know, people stay home and don't don't go out and, and especially without as many senior center activities going on and that kind of thing. Also, maintaining your house can be difficult and costly and you need to cook and clean for yourself. Um, and as as time moves on, if you need help with a lot of things around the clock, care is expensive and it's also really complicated to manage care workers as your needs grow. People worry about security, but also no shows. In, in New England here, we have a really tight labor market and it's hard to find good caregivers. And so a lot of people I work with are struggling um, managing that staff. The next uh, type of uh, senior living I'm gonna mention is continuing care retirement communities, CCRCs. These are those campuses you see that offer a range of solutions, sort of a continuum of care like um, Brooksby and Brookhaven. And there's about a, maybe a fewer than a dozen in the greater Boston area. These are the ones with the buy-in. So you have to put like somewhere between $100,000 and up to a million or so down. And then you still also have the $4,000 to $8,000 a month. And usually care costs more as well. So for planning purposes. The pros, the, the, the best part of CCRCs is the culture, the environment. It's a fun, engaging environment. They often have like um, professors being speakers. It's really a very active space spread over a campus. Um, services are there if you need them. The living spaces tend to be much larger than assisted living. And they usually also have, they always have a nursing home on site and they tend to be among the highest rated nursing homes. Um, certain meals are included in activities as well. Um, on the other hand, and some things people don't often know because their marketing is so great. Um, I mean, other than of course that they're very expensive, um, you still have to bring in your own care. It, they often have a company they recommend, but you have to manage that. Um, these communities often have a very long wait list and often their strength in their community is in the independent side. It's harder to coordinate typically the assisted living services than at a typical assisted living community. I work sometimes with families where people move out of their CCRCs into a standalone assisted living community for, for this reason. Uh, another point people often don't know about them is you have to be completely independent to move in. Um, and again, you have to manage the home care workers. So what I think, who I think CCRCs are a fabulous fit for are people in their 70s who are healthy and are just 
you know, dying for that really fun, engaging senior community, that senior environment, you know, assuming you can afford it. I, it's a fabulous fit for those. If for much older people who need a lot of help, um, the, the, the next um, option I'm going to talk about, assisted living, is usually a better fit. So assisted living um, is different than the CCRCs in that there is no buy-in. It's just a rental model, and it's which is typically four to eight thousand dollars a month, depending on how large your apartment is and how much care you need. Um, they provide help with your activities of daily living and provide all the services you need. There are tons of awesome ones in the greater Boston area. Um, you see those, they're the standalone buildings you see driving around. Uh, the positives, again, the help with the activities of daily living is provided and you don't need to coordinate that care. That's what you're paying for there is to have all of that managed for you. They're also in a confined single building, so it's not like a whole campus to get around like a CCRC. Um, and it's not as isolating as living at home. You can be as social as you want to be. You have your apartment you can stay in if you want, or you can go um, meet with people, do the activities and that kind of thing. In, in New England, where I think the real strength is, is if dementia is care is needed. So even with short-term memory loss, our assisted livings here do a fabulous job and they do an even better job if, if, if with, uh, as Alzheimer's progresses. Um, but yeah, that you get three meals a day, you get housekeeping activities, your family can call and check on you anytime and that kind of thing. Um, the cons here is that it's more expensive at living at home, but almost all your expenses are included. The apartment is smaller. That's one of the things people um, have to really get used to, but I encourage people to think about, okay, your apartment is just like a couple of rooms in your house. The whole building is like your whole home. And then, you know, some people worry about privacy. I don't want to be around that many people, but actually your apartment is private. So it, that people don't just come in. I mean, you, you engage in the community as much as you want. So finally, I'm going to talk about nursing homes. It's not really a type of senior living, but it's often confused with assisted living. So I find it helpful to provide a little explanation about it. So nursing homes, if you need them, and you're on private pay are very expensive, nine to $15,000 a month. Um, Medicaid covers it if you qualify, but you have to have very low income and only assets up to $2,000. Um, and Medicare will cover a nursing home only for a short stay following hospitalization. So a nursing home is good if you need a very high level of medic medical care, open wounds, daily injections, um, really all types of problems like that. Um, that's what it's for. It's for medical care. Um, the, and because of that, the environment is very, very medical. It feels more like a hospital. Um, it, 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 it's just not a very nice environment. It, it, an assisted living is like a, like a house, like a resort, like a home. A nursing home is like a hospital. And also at a nursing home, you know, many people are bedridden, you have to share rooms. It's just not a great place to be. The services and the food tend to be of lesser quality than like in an assisted living. And, you know, because the majority of people in nursing homes are there on Medicaid, the government is paying for more than half of the residents. Unfortunately, Medicaid doesn't reimburse them at a very high rate, so they can't afford to provide as much staff and food and everything as and, and as high quality as food as it like in assisted living. So like I said, they're just not really a nice place to be. So um, I think other people have mentioned the importance of planning ahead. That is absolutely the point in the senior living space. A lot of people want to stay home as long as they possibly can. And that's absolutely great. But it helps to do research ahead of time. So you have more options available. Um, when you are ready to move. Um, with CCRCs, again, the wait list can be two to three years, and you have to be completely healthy and independent in order to be accepted if that's where you want to go. So you have to plan for that. With an assisted living, um, what you have to plan for is that 
you know, places, it, it, some places won't take you if your health is in really tough shape at the end, but if you're already there, they'll let you stay. So if, as, if your health declines, if your mobility declines, you have fewer options. So it, it helps to plan for that. And then again, with nursing homes, it helps to plan ahead. If you know you're gonna need a nursing home, especially for the purpose of Medicaid, if say people are running out of money, um, you can, there's a difference between good nursing homes and not so good nursing homes. You can get into the nurse, good nursing homes if you private pay for approximately six months. So if you know you're gonna have, or a family member knows they're gonna have to move into a nursing home, you really have to start the process at about $100,000 left, then you can get into the much better nursing homes. And, and again, they might have waiting lists. So that's it for me. If um, I breeze through a lot of things and uh, senior living is really a very personal fit. So if anyone wants to talk through any specific scenario or anything, I'm always happy to talk, no obligation. Um, it's, there's a lot more nuance than, than what I, I explained here. So um, I'm available to talk again, anytime. Okay, thank you so much, Wendy, for that great information and sorry again for <laughs> not giving you the turn. Um, yeah, so um, I think you can tell probably that not only is this panel full of experts, but um, Bridget, Judy, Wendy, and Sarah also really care about people and they put their clients needs first. And again, um, as Sarah had mentioned and, and Wendy just said, you can feel free to reach out one on one to any of us and just talk. So, but that being said, if anyone has questions right now, we have time. I did see one question in the chat that it would be for Judy. Um, let's see, who would take craft items and recipes? Judy, any advice on that off the top of your head? <laughs> uh, craft items, perhaps a, um, a preschool, depending on what the items are, if they're you know usable by little kids. Um, if there's any art schools around, um, universities, I'm not sure what they take during COVID. Um, and what was the other piece? The other question? Recipes. Recipes. Hmm. If you have recipes cut out, you could go on like next door neighborhood listserv and say, I've got all these recipes and name a few and say, does anyone want them? Um, if you're not gonna keep them, you could always recycle them. Um, recipes. Um, could even maybe take photos of them. And yeah, that's, that's it. Just like taking photos of things that are memorable and you can't keep, you can take photos of the recipes and bring them up when you need them, if you're gonna use them. So thanks, Carrie, that was good. And also um, another for you, Judy, people are asking <laughs> about China and books. Books, if you have a lot of books and you live local to the Boston area, there is an organization called More Than Words. And what this organi organization provides is training for high school kids who have either been fostered in other homes other than their own parents who may have had some um, issues, um, delinquent issues, who, who may have been homeless, and they take them into their um, store, which they have in Waltham, and they train them how to run a store. So they show them how to take in money, because they sell books and they take books. So if you have lots of books, and I know um, I had a client who had like 80 boxes of books. They came and for no charge, they brought a big truck and their helpers who were volunteers loaded all those boxes in their truck and took them away to be sold at More Than Words. They're also located um, in Boston. They have a warehouse and they also have um, 
what are the, um, you know, those big metal boxes where you can put donations um, and you can look it up online where they might be in this area. They're also now taking um, used clothing that's in really good shape. And I think they'll also take like uh, DVDs and um, just all kinds of books that are in pretty good shape. Great and you can go on their website and they will um, have lots of information and the kids earn money doing this as well. And the other thing, well, there was another piece of this question or was it just about books? Oh, China. China. If your China is valuable, there's an organization that does online auction sales and um, there's also a company called Clean Out Your House and they have a shop in Waltham where they'll sell furniture and china and household goods. You can consign them there if they accept them and get a little money for them. If they're there for, I think, six months and don't sell, then they will donate them to a good cause. So. Wonderful. Thank you, Judy. And if there's any other questions, feel free to unmute yourself or put it in the chat. And also I just put in the chat a, a tool um, that you should be able to download. It's a PDF and it's basically a checklist for different things to do and check off as you do them in preparation for downsizing. Um, Cause sometimes that's helpful just to have it things itemized like that. I know for me um, to be able to see things hmm. in a list form. So feel free to download that and I'll also email it to you. So that's the free gift from us to you to help you um, plan ahead because as Sarah said, that's so important, you know, just get a head start, just get started and do one thing that moves you forward and then you'll get momentum and it won't seem quite as daunting that way. Um, I mentioned one other thing. As, yeah. What about China? Um, anything that's valuable or antiques? Um, I just can't off the top of my head think of the name of the company I mentioned that I didn't know the name, but if you went on the internet and you looked up um, household items, China, things that are valuable, auctioneers online, um, I'm sure you'll find a couple sites that can help you. Great. Okay, last call for questions. And if, um, again, if it's something specific, please reach out. We're here to help. That's what we do. And um, I will send the recording out within about 24 hours as well. If you need to revisit anything. Um, other than that, we really thank you for your time and having the opportunity to present to you um, and earn your trust in your business. And thank you so much, Bridget, Judy, Wendy, and Sarah for your time. Really thank appreciate. you. Sure. Thank you, everyone. Bye, everyone. Thanks Thank for you. attending. Have a great day.